And the identification division, with a file of 120 million fingerprints, answers thousands of identification requests daily from local peace officers. Can you believe that some of the biggest stars from the golden age of Hollywood had their own FBI files? That's right. The silver screen wasn't the only place they were making headlines. Let's peel back the curtain and explore the top 10 old Hollywood celebrities with shocking FBI files. Fingerprinting is the most accurate personal identification system ever developed. Number 10. Elizabeth Taylor Of all the celebrities with FBI files on them, Dame Elizabeth Taylor might be the most surprising. Taylor was one of the most successful and influential movie stars in Hollywood history having won multiple Academy Awards and appearing in countless all-time classic films. Her FBI file, however, isn't tied to any suspected criminal activity on her part, but rather covered numerous harassment and extortion attempts carried out against her from the 1940s all the way through the 1980s. Taylor's FBI file paints a disturbing picture of the challenges she faced as a Hollywood icon. In the 50s, she had more than her fair share of overzealous fans. The file reveals that during this period, one obsessive fan went to great lengths to get her attention. This fan not only repeatedly called her, but even went so far as to impersonate an FBI agent, hoping to establish a connection with the star. Even more chilling are the incidents of extortion and harassment detailed in the file. Numerous individuals attempted to extort money from Taylor, taking advantage of her fame and status. Fans began sending suspicious mail, some of it containing disturbing messages and threats. One individual even went so far as to threaten Taylor's life. Taylor suffered an enormous amount of harassment. The FBI file, comprising more than 150 pages, shows that she was subject to an appalling and frightening number of threats. Since the file ends in 1987, it's unclear whether the FBI investigated any additional extortion or death threats. Taylor lived until the age of 79, eventually passing away in 2011 in Los Angeles. Number 9. Jimi Hendrix In music history, Jimi Hendrix stands out as one of the most iconic and influential guitarists of all time. Hailing from the rainy city of Seattle, Washington, Hendrix's journey to legendary status began when he embarked on a fateful trip to England, leading to the formation of the groundbreaking Jimi Hendrix Experience in 1966. By the time 1969 rolled around, Hendrix was a colossal presence on the rock music scene, even headlining the iconic Woodstock Festival. But amidst the roaring applause and electric performances, Hendrix found himself caught in an unexpected twist involving the FBI. Unbeknownst to many, Hendrix's interactions with the law extended beyond his extraordinary musical talent. According to his FBI file, the guitarist had a brush with the authorities due to an arrest for marijuana possession during his time in Toronto, Canada in the spring of 69. With his trial date set for June, the Canadian government aimed to deport him, irrespective of the trial's outcome. Interestingly, the Canadian authorities sought assistance from the FBI to strengthen their case. They requested information on any prior arrests Hendricks had, which could be used against him. The FBI acknowledged a handful of earlier arrests from 1961 when Hendricks was in Seattle. Hendricks's Toronto trial concluded with a verdict of not guilty marking a legal victory for the iconic guitarist. Tragically, though, his triumphs were overshadowed by his untimely death less than a year later. Number 8. John Lennon In the tapestry of rock and roll history, few names shine as brightly as John Lennon's. As the co-founder of the Beatles, he etched his mark in music's annals and stood as a prominent civil rights advocate. Yet behind the melodies and activism lay a shadowy tale of intense scrutiny that only the FBI could orchestrate. Lennon's fame was a double-edged sword. His outspoken stance against the Vietnam War and his vocal advocacy for peace drew the gaze of the FBI, leading to a torrent of surveillance that spanned numerous years. The Bureau's interest in Lennon was fueled by his alignment with liberal political activism a stark contrast to the views held by the then-president Richard Nixon. 
As of the time of Lennon's death, the agency had compiled 281 pages of information about the superstar, much of it unsubstantiated gossip. The FBI's concerns centered on Lennon's financial support of organizations linked to the New Left, a term that branded activists promoting a Marxist-inspired socialist ideology steeped in radicalism and civil rights activism. The files revealed the FBI's unease over donations Lennon and his wife Yoko Ono made to political activist Rennie Davis, a defendant in the infamous Chicago 7 trial. Allegedly, they bankrolled Davis's Election Year Strategy Information Center, EYSIC, with a hefty $75,000. As pressure mounted from the Nixon administration, Lennon's green card renewal became a battleground. A prior drug conviction served as a pretext for the Immigration and Naturalization Service to withhold renewal, placing Lennon's residency in jeopardy. In a David and Goliath tale, Lennon's successful appeal allowed him to stay in the U.S., effectively thwarting Nixon's aspirations and the FBI's surveillance efforts. Lennon's FBI file, a staggering 500 pages, paints a portrait of relentless surveillance that encroached upon his personal life and ideals. The FBI's relentless pursuits even led to rumors that Nixon's apprehension regarding Lennon's popularity among young voters fueled the attempt to revoke his U.S. visa potentially swaying the election's outcome. From the moment Lennon sang at a rally supporting anti-war activist John Sinclair in 1971, the FBI's watchful eye was upon him. His anti-war rhetoric and calls for peace were deemed a potential threat to the status quo. This shift in focus from communist concerns to political activism underscores the Bureau's unease over Lenin's potential influence on public sentiment, even to the detriment of Nixon's re-election bid. Despite his legal victories, the surveillance persisted until that tragic day in December 1980 when Lenin's life was tragically cut short. It took years of persistence from historian John Wiener, including a Supreme Court battle, to compel the FBI to release their files. This expose, almost two decades after Lennon's passing, peeled back the layers of secrecy and revealed the extent to which a rock icon could become a target of government scrutiny. Imagine all the people. Number 7. Michael Jackson the mysterious case of Michael Jackson, a name synonymous with both musical genius and controversy, extends beyond the stage and into the shadowy realm of the FBI scrutiny. Following Jackson's death, FBI files revealed the tumultuous trials that marred his career. These files illuminate the investigations that revolved around Jackson's child molestation trials in 1993 and 2004. In both instances, the FBI lent its support to local jurisdictions grappling with the charges. One intriguing facet of these files is the revelation that FBI agents endeavored to persuade Jordan Chandler, the accuser in the 1993 case, to testify in the 2004 trial. Remarkably, Chandler had previously settled a civil suit against Jackson in 1994, pocketing a staggering $15 million. Despite this settlement, he steadfastly refused to take the stand in the subsequent trial. However, despite more than a decade of monitoring, the FBI files disappointingly offer no major revelations about Jackson's private life. Moreover, these files did not lead to any federal charges against him. Number 6. Charlie Chaplin the uproarious laughter that Charlie Chaplin's iconic antics elicited on screen may have masked a more complex tale off screen. This beloved comedian and entertainer, hailing from England, achieved unparalleled fame in the early 20th century, especially with his endearing Little Tramp character. But behind the scenes, Chaplin's life was entwined with the watchful eyes of the FBI, an agency whose interest in him dated back to 1922 just as he was ascending to the heights of his entertainment career. Chaplin's FBI file, a voluminous tome that stretches over 2,000 pages, peels back the layers of a story that spans decades. In earlier years, the Bureau's concerns centered on Chaplin's perceived affiliations with communism, an ideology that stirred unease in the political landscape of the time. However, the bulk of the file emerges from the 1940s and revolves around potential violations of the Mann Act, 
colloquially known as the White Slave Traffic Act. Designed to combat underage prostitution, this legislation rendered it illegal for an adult to transport a minor across state lines for, quote, immoral purposes. Chaplin became enmeshed in this legal labyrinth due to his involvement with Joan Barry, a young woman embroiled in a lawsuit against him regarding the paternity of her unborn child. According to the FBI's accounts, Chaplin supposedly orchestrated Barry's journey from California to New York in 1942, a move that raised suspicions under the Mann Act. While Chaplin eventually merged clear of these allegations, the FBI was not his sole pursuer. Across the Atlantic, MI5, the British counterpart to the FBI, was also monitoring him, their suspicions similarly fueled by perceived communist connections. This international intrigue climaxed when the U.S. Attorney General barred Chaplin's re-entry into the U.S. after a visit to London in 1952. This final push prompted Chaplin and his wife Una to make a permanent move to Switzerland, a decision that marked the end of an era. In 1977, at the age of 88, Charlie Chaplin passed away in Switzerland. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite! Number 5 Bud Abbott and Lou Costello Comedy legends Bud Abbott and Lou Costello weren't confined to the stage alone during their legendary partnership. Behind the scenes, a fascinating twist emerged. Their FBI files, filled with intrigue and unexpected revelations, showcased a different side of the iconic duo. For decades, Abbott and Costello's comedic chemistry delighted audiences. But it seems their real lives weren't short on drama either. Let's start with Costello's file, which reads like a whirlwind. An informant's account reveals a jaw-dropping detail, Costello's vast collection of obscene films. Reportedly, this assortment could have very well been Hollywood's most expansive. But that's not all. It delves into an eyebrow-raising incident involving Costello and two sex workers in Portland, dating back to December 1946. As for Bud Abbott, his FBI dossier opens with a peculiar chapter, a reference to his own extensive pornography collection, posting more than 1,500 reels. Quite the collection indeed. But what truly captures our attention is a letter penned by none other than Costello himself, in this letter, dated 1946, Costello invites J. Edgar Hoover, the formidable head of the FBI, to join him for lunch on their California studio set. An audacious move, to say the least. Adding another layer to the intrigue, there's a letter from 1943 written by a woman from Illinois. She listened keenly to Abbott and Costello's radio show and believed she'd stumbled upon coded words relating to espionage. These suspicions prompted her to contact the FBI and share her findings, showcasing the comedic duo's unexpected brush with intrigue. The tale takes a somber turn when we consider their final acts. Lou Costello left the stage of life first, passing away in 1959 in Los Angeles. His partner in laughter, Bud Abbott, followed over a decade later, departing this world in 1974 in Woodland Hills, California. Will you keep quiet, Sebastian? Excuse me, please. Sebastian, please, don't interrupt my act. Number four, Lucille Ball, the iconic star behind I Love Lucy. But wait, did you know that even the charming and hilarious Lucy found herself on the FBI's radar? It might sound like a punchline, but the reality is quite interesting. Back in 1936, Ball registered to vote and marked her party affiliation as communist. A seemingly innocent act turned into a twist of fate that landed her squarely on the FBI's watch list. Now, why would America's favorite redhead get involved with the Communist Party? Well, here's the scoop. She did it to make her socialist grandfather happy. But little did she know that this act would be noted and her name would find its way onto a list that most celebrities wanted to avoid. Fast forward to 1953, just after Lucy and her husband Desi Arnaz welcomed their second child. A scandal erupted around her, fueled by misunderstandings about her Communist Party affiliation. Turns out, what seemed like a minor gesture had morphed into something much bigger. Ball had been summoned by the House Un-American Activities Committee for an interview. 
Her FBI file, a hefty 156 pages, brims with references to her 1936 communist registration and even features testimony from a reporter who claimed to have witnessed a communist party gathering at Ball's residence in 1937. Despite being cleared of any communist ties, the scandal still managed to grab headlines and cast shadows on Lucy's career. It nearly spelled the end of her time in the limelight. But as Lucy often did on screen, she bounced back. She overcame the scandal and proved that her talent was bigger than any misconceptions. And just when you think this story couldn't get any more intriguing, did you know that there's a mention of Lucy claiming to intercept radio transmissions from Japanese spies with her dental fillings? Wild, right? Well, the veracity of this claim might be up for debate. But one thing is certain, Lucille Ball's FBI file isn't just a collection of gags. It's a testament to the twists and turns of a Hollywood legend's life. So the next time you chuckle at one of Lucy's antics, remember that behind the laughter, there's a story that even the FBI found worth exploring. It's so tasty, too! <laughs> Number 3. Marilyn Monroe Marilyn was the queen of beauty, glamour, and charm. But did you know that beneath the spotlight, there was a side of Marilyn that intrigued the FBI? Get ready for a tale that delves into suspicion, connections, and even conspiracy theories. While Marilyn is best remembered for her captivating presence on screen, her FBI file paints a different picture. And here's the twist. It's not really about her. It's about her husband, playwright Arthur Miller. Back in the 1950s and 60s, the FBI raised eyebrows over Miller's potential communist leanings. They weren't just casually glancing, either. They had their watchful eyes trained on his involvement with Marxist and communist groups. But here's where the story gets even more exciting. Did you know that Marilyn's file contains tidbits about her untimely death? Yep, you heard that right. In an excerpt from Norman Mailer's biography of Marilyn, the author suggests that the FBI and CIA might have had a role to play in her 1962 passing. It's a theory that surely raised some eyebrows. Born as Norma Jean Mortensen, Marilyn Monroe's life was a whirlwind of fame, romance, and mystery. Her connections, including her affairs with the Kennedys, particularly President John F. Kennedy and his brother Bobby, sparked concerns about potential security risks. The FBI, ever vigilant during the McCarthy era, cast a wary eye on her interactions, fearing that her personal relationships could compromise national values through cultural influence. Interestingly, her bond with Frederick Vanderbilt Field, an outspoken socialist living in Mexico, rang alarm bells. When Marilyn met him during furniture shopping in Central America, it set off suspicions. Even her marriage to Arthur Miller, who held socialist sympathies, was seen as a sign that she might have drifted into the, quote, communist orbit, as the FBI put it. Some even wondered if her marriage was a front, a distraction from more covert activities. The truth, however, is a bit more nuanced. While the FBI noted that Marilyn held leftist views, they couldn't find definitive proof of her involvement in the Communist Party. As one entry in her file suggests, she may have had, quote, positively and concisely leftist opinions. Her role within the movement was not widely known amongst its members. Marilyn's FBI files, released under the Freedom of Information Act in the 1980s, offer a glimpse into the era's fears and suspicions. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Number 2. Walt Disney Think about this. The man behind the enchanting world of Disney, a secret informant for the FBI? Yes, you heard that right. Walt Disney, the creator of our beloved Mickey Mouse and the magical realm he inhabits, had a relationship with the FBI that was far from ordinary. It was intriguing, complex, and surprising. You might think that the man who conjured up the enchanting world of Disney had an ordinary relationship with the FBI. But oh, that would be wrong. You're in for a thrilling ride as we peel back the layers of a 570-page file to uncover a fascinating connection. Disney, the genius who brought us Mickey Mouse and the magic of Disneyland, found himself in a very curious position. 
While he wasn't suspected of any sinister deeds, Disney was actually a secret informant for the FBI. The mastermind behind the happiest place on Earth was feeding the Bureau information about people in Hollywood whom he believed were linked to communism. But this wasn't just a one-sided affair. J. Edgar Hoover, the director of the FBI at the time, was more than willing to give Disney some perks in return. As a thank you gesture, Hoover granted Disney access to film scenes for the Mickey Mouse Club right in the heart of FBI headquarters in Washington, D.C. Now that's a unique filming location. And if that's not enough, rumor has it that Hoover even had a hand in fine-tuning certain scripts. The Disney FBI saga spanned over three decades, from 1933 to Disney's passing in 1963. During the Red Scare era, when McCarthyism was in full swing, Disney wasn't merely creating fairy tales. He was reporting to the FBI. But it wasn't just about feeding information. The Bureau and Disney built an intriguing camaraderie. They would chat over the phone, discussing movies and TV shows. In fact, Disney was so invested that he dedicated episodes of the Mickey Mouse Club to promote the FBI in a positive light and instill, quote, true American values in young viewers. Even more surprising, Disney proposed the idea of an FBI-themed zone or exhibition at Disneyland, offering the FBI free reign within the theme park. And guess what? They took him up on it. But wait, there's more. The FBI even influenced the storyline of a Disney movie, That Darn Cat, ensuring that the agency looked good. Fast forward to the 1990s and a Freedom of Information request by biographer March Elliott uncovered this complex tapestry of collaboration between Disney and the FBI. However, some 200 pages of the file were heavily redacted, meaning we will likely never know just how closely Disney worked with Hoover, and whether or not he named names and had careers, maybe even lives, ruined due to his suspicions of anti-American beliefs. Number 1. Marlena Dietrich a German-born Hollywood star who lit up both the silver screen and the FBI's radar during World War II. Born in Germany, Marlena made a name for herself as a movie sensation in her homeland before finding her place in the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. When World War II hit, she didn't just stick to acting. Nope, Marlena went above and beyond, using her films and her performances to entertain the troops. She saw it as her patriotic duty a way to contribute to the fight against Hitler and the Nazis. But hold on, the plot thickens. Despite her efforts, suspicions lingered like shadows. The FBI, in particular, had its doubts about where Dietrich's loyalties truly lay. They were haunted by the fear that she might be a Nazi spy. As a result, they compiled a hefty file on her, documenting her every move and analyzing her every action. At the helm of this operation was none other than J. Edgar Hoover, the head honcho of the FBI. From 1942 to 1944, he orchestrated a surveillance symphony around Dietrich. Agents followed her footsteps, tracking her every movement. They even went so far as to open her mail, hoping to uncover incriminating evidence. Yet, the needle remained stubbornly stuck on innocent. Marlena, however, wasn't content with merely defying suspicion. In 1944, she took her loyalty a step further, agreeing to become a spy for her adopted homeland. While she performed for American soldiers in Europe, she was also gathering information on potential subversive activities. The mission? To report back to her spy masters upon her return. Talk about an unexpected twist in this tale. The FBI's investigation did not result in the damning evidence they'd hoped for. Instead, they unearthed details about Marlena's personal life. The agents took note of her, quote, promiscuous lifestyle, remarking on her affairs with both men and women, a detail that seems to have raised more eyebrows than necessary. Fast forward to today, and around 150 pages of the FBI's file on Marlena are available for public consumption. Yet a frustrating twist remains. Part of the file was destroyed in 1980, casting a shadow of uncertainty on what secrets might have been buried within those lost pages. 
Did they hold insights regarding espionage adventures? Could they have revealed whether her bold comments about wanting to assassinate Hitler were taken seriously? Sadly, these pages slipped through history's fingers as Dietrich passed away in 1992 at the age of 90, taking her intriguing stories with her. And there you have it, guys and gals. 10 incredible stories that reveal a whole new side to these legendary old Hollywood stars. Who knew that their lives were intertwined with the FBI in such unexpected ways? Say, if you enjoyed this video and want to uncover more fascinating secrets from the past, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And if you have any other celebrities in mind that you'd like us to cover, drop your suggestions in the comments below. Thanks for watching.